next vice president of the United States, Tim Wall. Don't miss out. In this video, I'm going to expose the hidden truth behind Kamala Harris's VP choice. Watch now or regret it later. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Philadelphia. Thank you, Madam Vice President, for the trust you put in me, but maybe more so, thank you for bringing back the joy. I'm thrilled to be on this journey with you and Doug, this incredible journey. And Pennsylvania, I know you know this, but my God, what a treasure you have in Josh Shapiro. <laughs> Holy hell, can this guy bring the fire? He can bring the fire. This is a visionary leader. Also, I have to tell you, everybody in America knows when you need a bridge fix, call that guy. <laughs> okay, I'm going to fast forward just a bit. Let's get to some substance. From her first day as a prosecutor, as a district attorney, attorney general of the great state of California, a United States senator, and vice president of the United States, Vice President Harris has fought on the side of the American people. She took on the predators, she took on the fraudsters, she took down the transnational gangs, she stood up against powerful corporate... I know a little something about that commitment to people. I was born in West Point, Nebraska. I lived in Butte, a small town of 400, where community was a way of life. Growing up, I spent the summers working on the family farm. My mom and dad taught us, show generosity towards your neighbors and work for a common good. My dad served in the Army during the Korean War. and With his encouragement, at 17, I joined the Army National Guard. For 24 years, I proudly wore the uniform of this nation. The National Guard gave me purpose. It gave me the strength of a shared commitment to something greater than ourselves. And just as it did for my dad and millions of others, the GI Bill gave me a shot at a college education. My dad was a teacher. My brothers and sisters and I followed in their footsteps. Three out of four of us married teachers. <laughs> what we do. For nearly 20 years, I had the privilege of teaching high school social studies and coaching football. <laughs> including winning that state championship. <laughs> Thank you. Don't ever close the yearbook. Don't ever. But it was my students. They encouraged me to run for office. They saw in me what I was hoping to instill in them. A commitment of common good. A belief that one person can make a difference. So in 2006, I, 2006, I took a leap and I ran for Congress. And because high school teachers are super optimistic, I was running in a district that had one Democrat since 1892. 
Well, my neighbors grace me with an opportunity to represent them in the United States House of Representatives. I'm proud of the work we did there together. I worked across the aisle on veterans issues, on agriculture, and on ways to grow rural economies. I learned the art of compromise without compromising my values. And now as governor of the great state of Minnesota, I bring those experiences to bear in tackling the challenges that are facing our great state. Minnesota's strength comes from our values, our commitment to working together, to seeing past our differences, to always being willing to lend a helping hand. Those are the same values I learned on the family farm and tried to instill in my students. I took it to Congress and to the state capitol, and now Vice President Harris and I are running to take those very values to the White House. You know, I like his backstory, man. It's um, It seems to be a sincere, ethical, uh, for-service type of background. You know, it's not a guy I don't believe. It doesn't appear to be somebody thirsting for power. You know, wants to be this power broker guy doing it for all the accolades. You know, I, I just don't get that sense. I know it's a speech, and he's a politician, but if you've been 20 years as a teacher, uh, 24 years as an Army National Guard, 20 years as a teacher, eh, you know, then doesn't really seem like somebody who was, you know, interested in this type of position, so to speak. Sort of like he fell into his calling or a second calling. You know what I mean? So I like it. I think it's going to be pretty effective on the campaign trail. Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Michigan. Now, Donald Trump sees the world a little differently than us. All right, here we go. Here we go. First of all, he doesn't know the first thing about service. He doesn't have time for it because he's too busy serving himself. Again and again and again, Trump weakens our economy to strengthen his own hand. He mocks our laws. He sows chaos and division. And that's to say nothing of his record as president. He froze in the face of the COVID crisis. He drove our economy into the ground. And make no mistake, violent crime was up under Donald Trump. That's not even counting the crimes he committed. Hey, 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 give props where it's due. That's a pretty good line. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. It ain't malarkey. You know, it's not a malarkey line from old Joe, Joe Biden, Jim Crow Joe, but that's pretty good. It's pretty good. You know, <laughs> some of us. Look at Kamala. Kamala looks like a proud sister. Like, yeah, I got the right one, baby. We gonna kick some ass up in here. Look at Kamala. Kamala look happy, yo. Like, yeah, looking all presidential, standing back there, joining. Like, yeah. Call me DL. Give me a call, DL. Some of us are. <laughs> Some of us, some of us in here are old enough to remember. I see you down there. <laughs> I see those old white guys. Some of us are old enough to remember when it was Republicans who were talking about freedom. It turns out now what they meant was the government should be free to invade your doctor's office. 
In Minnesota, we respect our neighbors and their personal choices that they make. Even if we wouldn't make the same choice for ourselves, there's a golden rule. Mind your own damn business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a problem. There's a problem in Mega World. I heard him talking like they should have chose Josh Shapiro. Yeah, I don't know, man. Josh Shapiro seems a little slicker. This is a little different. This is uh Chris Farley ish, huh? That's what they say, Chris Farley ish. These guys are after my heart, Chant, and mind your own damn business. That feels good, so thank you. <laughs> Look, that includes IVF, and this gets personal for me and my family. When my wife and I decided to have children, we spent years going through infertility treatments, and I remember praying every night for a call for good news. The pit in my stomach when the phone rang, and the agony when we heard that the treatments hadn't worked. So it wasn't by chance that when we welcomed our daughter into the world, we named her Hope. When Vice President and I talk about freedom, we mean the freedom to make your own health care decisions. and for our children to be free to go to school without worrying they'll be shot dead in their classrooms. By the way, as you heard, I was one of the best shots in Congress, but in Minnesota, we believe in the Second Amendment, but we also believe in common sense gun violence laws. Vice President Harris' idea of freedom is a ticket for education to be that ticket to the middle class, not crippling debt. Air that's clean, water that's pure, communities that are safe. Look at Cop Marla clapping. Cop Marla liked that line. A place where we settle our political differences, not through violence, but with our votes. And that's what this election's about. What direction will this country go in? He's not going back. Well, Donald Trump would damn sure take us backwards. Let's be clear about that. And don't believe him when he plays dumb. He knows exactly what Project 2025 will do to restrict our freedoms. Yeah, he's a politician. Sounded kind of folksy there. Then he slid in the old 2025 scare tactic. You're doing good, brother. You don't need that nonsense. That ain't on his website. He's not promoting that. He didn't write that. No one on his current team wrote that shit. But that's how dirty games are played. And see, if Trump says something similar, all the media will be screaming and crying. So now, 2025 is not a Trump doctrine. To rig the economy to help the super rich. Hold on, both parties do that. Both parties rigged the economy to help the super rich. Both parties. And you know it too. Oh, God. Another demerit. If Trump gets a chance to return, he's going to pick up exactly where he left off four years ago. Only this time, it will be much, much worse. Oh. Raising costs on middle class family. He will re repeal the Affordable Care Act, no doubt about it. 
He'll gut Social Security and Medicare. And when somebody tells you you are, they believe him. He said he'd ban abortion across this country and he'll do it, whether or not Congress is there or not. Donald Trump's not fighting for you or your family. Damn, he said whether Congress is there or not. Jesus. Yeah, man. Can you hear him now? I'm hearing Polito speak. I mean, I know both sides do it. I'm just saying. I would call it out if it was Trump saying it too. He never, he never sat at that kitchen table like the one I grew up at wondering how we were going to pay the bills. He set his country club up in Mar-a-Lago wondering how he can cut taxes for his rich friends. And I got to tell you, his running mate shares his dangerous and backward agenda for this country. J.D. Vance literally, literally wrote the foreword for the architect of the Project 2025 agenda. Like all regular people I grew up with in the heartland, J.D. studied at Yale, had his career funded by Silicon Valley billionaires, and then wrote a bestseller trashing that community. Come on! That's not what middle America is. And I gotta tell you, I can't wait to debate the guy. That is, if, you, if he's willing to get off the couch and show up. So, <laughs> you see what I did there? Look. <laughs> I got to tell you pointing out just an observation of mine that I, I that I made. I just have to say it. You know it. You feel it. These guys are creepy and yes, just weird as hell. That's what you see. That's what you see. So you know what's out there. So say it with me. We aren't going back. We're going back. We are not going back. So we got 91 days. My God, that's easy. We'll sleep when we're dead. Over those next 91 days and every day in the White House, I'll have Vice President Harris's back every single day. And we'll have yours. You know how this works. We can't do it alone. We need you, each and every one of you. That was a lot of words. That's what it was. It was a lot of words. You may have liked them. You may not have liked them. But at the end of the day, all it was was words. And I'm seeing a lot of people being very excited about a bunch of words a guy just said on mic. That's all he's doing. Hell, I say words on the mic. Anybody can say words on the mic. He's not running for president. And even if he was, he's just saying words. That's all it is. Let's bring it down a notch. Let's calibrate. Let's be reasonable. Let's not go running off into the woods. Let's not get all the heads up in the clouds. This doesn't change anything. Changes nothing. I want to know how this benefits me and my family. 
I want to know what we're going to do about them SBA loans. I want to know, do we got some type of agenda that's going to help me and my family and my cousins and my, my friends and my neighbors get off the bottom of the economic ladder finally in the country we built for free against our will? If you ain't got no answers for that, if only thing you can say when I answer that question is, don't think about yourself, then you ain't got no deal. It's no deal, no deal. I'm not interested. See, I just gave a speech. It hit home for, it hits home for some folks. So here's the thing. All I'm trying to point out is that this guy gave a great speech here. Kamala Harris gave a speech just before that. And she's been working on that stuff speech. But it's just words. What is the agenda? We got to keep that in mind. It's very frustrating that they've truncated this election to the point where we can't force the issue. Because I don't know about you, and I know you may be a sap. Some of you may be suckers, not all of you. I'm hoping some of you are smart, engaged, willing to go to bat for what you need for your community. And all I'm saying is, What's in it for us? That's all. And I, mean, I just want to remind everybody who loved that speech, who thinks Walls is a breath of fresh air. He's not at the top of the ticket. Kamala is. And Kamala believes in nothing. So I temper any like, ooh, he did that with, ah, uh, yeah. She didn't do that. Not only has she not done that, she's been silent on those issues for four years. And even now she's not talking about it. 